Credential Manager. After you've signed in, it's important to understand how user credentials are stored and protected. Users must sign in not only to Windows 10, but also to websites and online services, most of which do not use the user's Windows 10 credentials. When users access a website, an online service or a server computer on a network, they might need to provide user credentials. Windows can store the credentials to make it easier for users to access those sites later. These credentials are stored in secure areas known as vaults. To access the stored credentials, open Control Panel, click User Accounts and then click Credential Manager. You can then browse the list of stored credentials. Windows separates the list of those used for websites, listed under Web Credentials, and those used for Windows servers, listed under Windows Credentials. When a user signs into an Active Directory domain, they provide their user credentials to a domain controller. As a result of successful authentication, the authenticating domain controller issues Kerberos tickets to the user's computer. The user's computer uses these tickets to establish sessions with server computers that are part of the same ADDS forest. So essentially, if a server receives a session request, it examines the Kerberos ticket for validity. If it's valid in all respects and issued by a trusted authenticating authority, such as a domain controller in the same forest, a session is allowed. These Kerberos tickets and related security tokens such as NTLM hashes are stored in the local security authority, which is a process which runs on Windows-based computers and handles the exchange of such information between the local computer and requesting authorities. But it is possible for certain malicious software to gain access to this security process and hence exploit the stored tickets and hashes. To help protect against this, Windows Defender Credential Guard implements a technology known as Virtualization Assisted Security. This enables Credential Guard to block access to credentials stored in the local security authority. Credential Guard has a number of requirements. First, you must be using Windows 10 Enterprise or Windows 10 Education. Next, your UFI must be 2.3.1 or greater. You must have enabled Secure Boot in the UFI. Because Credential Guard is virtualization based, you must have appropriate virtualization features enabled. And a memory input output management unit must be present. Also, a TPM must be installed in your computer, and firmware lock must be enabled. If your computer meets these requirements, then to enable Credential Card, use the following procedure. On a domain controller, open the appropriate group policy for editing and navigate to Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, System, Device Guard, and then enable the Turn on Virtualization Based Security value. Device Guard. With malicious software or malware changing daily, the ability of organizations to keep up to date with emerging threats is difficult. DeviceGuard helps to mitigate this. Rather than allowing apps to run unless blocked, DeviceGuard only runs specifically trusted apps. The requirements for DeviceGuard are as for Credential Guard. To enable DeviceGuard, you must first digitally sign all the trusted apps that you want to allow to run on your devices. You can do this in a number of ways. First of all, you can publish your apps by using the Microsoft Store or Microsoft Store for Business. You can use your own digital certificate or public key infrastructure. You can use a non-Microsoft certificate authority. Or you can use the Device Guard signing portal. Once you've signed your apps, to enable Device Guard, again, open the appropriate group policy node for editing and navigate to Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, System, Device Guard, and then turn on virtualization-based security. It's important to consider the question, what is device health, before looking at how Windows 10 can help to ensure only healthy devices connect to the corporate network. Generally, a Windows 10 device might be considered healthy if it's configured with appropriate security features and settings. The requirements for device health attestation are the same as for device guard, with the exception that the TPM you use must be version 2 or later. Here's how it works. During hardware startup, components are measured. Windows 10 startup components are measured. If device guard is enabled, the current device guard policy is measured. The Windows 10 kernel is measured. Antivirus software is started as the first kernel mode driver. Boot start drivers are measured. The mobile device management server through the MDM agent issues a health check command by using the health attestation configuration service provider. Startup measurements, now stored in the log, are sent to and validated by the Health Attestation Service.